So I'd like to introduce to everybody. Um, this is uh, Andrew Mateeg uh, Pedrick. Uh, he is a Perkyoman alum and architect, uh, and he's going to share uh, his world with us this morning. And uh, I'd love for you to go ahead and do a little bit of an introduction uh, of your, yourself as well, and then we'll jump into a few questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and thank you all for letting me participate in this. I understand this is the third or fourth uh, X day you've done, and I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, I, uh, I guess several of you on the call know uh, I was at Perky Omen in 76 is when I graduated, so I was there for the last two years of my, my high school uh, education, and it, um, I'll just put the, the plug in right now. <laughs> it really changed my entire direction, um, and so I really am very grateful for that. I was um, a kid who um, liked math, liked geometry, liked sciences and, and all that, um, but was really into artwork. And so uh, in um, uh, junior high and beginning of high school, I thought, oh, I just really want to be an artist. That's what I want to do. And uh, I got kind of led um, with some really good advice <laughs> to, towards architecture, which was uh, a family um, uh, there was a precedent in my family, I guess, for architecture and what really led me to it. Uh, one of the questions, I guess, is what inspired me to be an architect. And I'll get into that more. But, but basically, I, I really enjoyed that Perky Elman focused me and it helped me to find my own motivation to gather uh, various strengths that I had. And uh, that led me towards architecture and engineering together. So that was great. Um, fantastic experience. Um, and so from... My time in Pennsylvania, I moved to New York, and then from New York, I moved to um, Florida. From Florida, I moved out here. It's been a long kind of journey of various firms, various sizes, uh, kinds of projects to today. And uh, twice along the way, I had a practice of my own. Um, in fact, 20 years apart, uh, almost to the day I started to practice once in Connecticut in the early 90s, and then in 2011, here, I started again. And so I've really enjoyed that. Um, loved the time I had with large firms, and some were very large. Loved it with the various sizes. Um, but the last nine years, I've been practicing on my, uh, on my own, I should say, uh, in, a, in a, a firm that I created, and really have enjoyed that the most, I think, along the way. So great experiences. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's that's definitely of interest too to talk about uh, at some point in in here the 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 process of of starting your own versus working for a firm uh, is of interest. But let's start off with asking uh, back to that inspiration that you found to become an architect. What uh, what would you define as your inspiration? Well, um, Kind of three things, um, really. Um, the first was that my grandfather, uh, my my mom's dad, was an architect in uh, in New York. <clears throat> he was a partner in a very well known New York firm that did um, a huge amount of Art Deco buildings in the nineteen twenties, thirties, forties. And so, of course, growing up, knowing uh, knowing him and knowing about architecture through him, he was a very dynamic uh, kind of very. Uh, sort of force of nature person, brilliant guy. Um, and his daughter, my mom, was, uh, of the, they were of the generation where he said to her, you are not, you're my daughter, you are not going to become a, an architect. You're not going to become a professional. You know, you're, you're going to get married and have kids. And so she was a very frustrated uh, architect designer. And so uh, I'm the third child and she, uh, they, sort of found it in me. <laughs> That uh, and I kind of vastly, I kind of came towards architecture and design. Essentially, that was one. The other was that we lived in New Orleans in the 1960s, and there was an architect across the street who, um, whose son I became very good friends with, and still am today. And uh, this uh, his father was an architect who was not only designing homes and buildings in New Orleans, but he was working on his house with his hands as I watched across the street as a little kid growing up. And I just enjoyed the carpentry he was doing and how he was finishing the work. And I, I was thrilled. Um, 
the, the, the clincher for everything was in 1969, I was in um, Cuernavaca and Mexico City, in Mexico. And um, I was with my family at the Museum of Anthropology. And it's kind of a crazy story, I guess. But um, my folks said, you were just like, you're like a little kid who was like, we couldn't get you out of there. And I kept thinking it wasn't the anthropology, it was the architecture. I was just, I was like beside myself. So I kind of found from some, you know, set of circumstances, um, my love of, of doing this work. Didn't know what it meant until much later on, really, but I, I, that's how I kind of got into it. That's awesome. You make me think of the, the statement, you know, love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life uh, when, when you describe that. That's great. So true. Very true. Yeah. We, um, yeah, ar architecture is one of those professions. People say, you know, some people make money. Uh, some people don't make that much money. Um, but you, but you you love the craft. It really is a craft. Um, takes in some ways it takes a long time to develop the skills. Um, but these days for people going into architecture, it's such a different world in terms of the speed up the curve of, of learning and, understanding how to do it, you know, the artistic side and the technical side, which it has a lot of both, um, come up entirely differently than, than uh, my old generation, which was more like, you know, wait your turn. When you're 50, maybe you'll be good. Uh, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of people in their 20s and 30s who are really good at what they're doing. And so I, it excites me because the people who I think are, are interesting people um, are, uh, are not um, bound or constrained by age or, or geography or background or, you know, any of the things that were much more factors when I was growing up. Thanks very much for watching. If you found it enlightening and interesting, then please like the video with your thumbs up. Please also subscribe to the channel to be notified of future episodes.